everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this faceted drawstring gift bag. I'm really pleased with how this one's come together. Really, really straightforward to make. It's just a bit of clever scoring and um, this detail here just to kind of bring it all together. I love it, really, really do. So you just open from the top here with the ribbon and it is just literally that, a drawstring opening and it's it's just really fun. It, I, I wanted to do it, I was looking back through some old tutorials and I'd done a drawstring one, I'll share that one up here and um, that was a circular one and it's it, it was it, I think it was probably quite a challenge for people um, because you were working with a lot of angles and you were working with a circle and and so on and it just made me think about that whole kind of drawstring idea again um, and I just thought there's got to be another way to do it. So this is what I've come up with. Got a lovely gift tag there. This one says, warning, contains pretty things. It's, I guess these ones are intended to put on the back, the back of cards or on your envelopes and stuff, but I thought it looked really nice for a gift tag for this one here. And then on the back, I've got room to write my message. I finished it with some little decorative brads on the side there and I'll share the papers and everything. And I've also done some of my little faux metal pieces on the end of the ribbon there just to stop and fray in and I really like that lovely little handle you can reinforce the base if you want to put something heavier in there because it'd look you know it'd be great for a candle something like that but um it is quite strong anyway because I've used the kalau but if you put you know a few more sheets or some grey board in the bottom then that will really strengthen it but the handle's nice and strong and um, I've used hot glue to keep all that secure so yeah let me show you how to make this really fun bag okay I also made it in this larger style but it reminded me not that it's a bad thing but it reminded me of my rocket bag or rocket gift box that I made and um, again you can see how it looks from the top there so this is using three pieces of 12 by 12 I'm holding it like this because I haven't actually um, fixed the bottom yet because I'm going to keep this flat so I was playing around this is the one I originally done first and although I like it and I will use it I think I prefer the smaller one but for anybody that would like to make the larger one I'll put the measurements to this one in my blog as well so you'll put it together exactly the same way as I show you for the smaller one but I'll just give you the measurements for the larger one there um, and this one hasn't got a handle either just needs a nice gift tag so but I feel like I said I've left that um, open so once I undo the top there the whole thing will fold flat and I can just store it away easily because it's quite big otherwise okay so for the stamp there um, the warning contains pretty things this is from the card making magic and this is happy mail so all of them here and I do use them you know like I said are more to put on the back of your cards or your on the envelope itself but I think they work quite well on gift tags as well so I've used that one um, as always everything will be linked what I'm sharing this one here is a older pack from the works um, it's called Summer Dreams. It's absolutely stunning. All the papers, the two that I just showed you there are all from this pad and the one that I'm using today. You can see I've got more of those orange colours and it's all from this pad and it's only £3. They're an absolute steal. They are 230 GSM, acid free and they're double sided. Sometimes the images on the other sides don't always work well but for £3 you can't really grumble at that and um, hopefully this might still be available online or they have some you know, other beautiful ones in because they do always have a lot. So there's the tag that I've done for this one. So again, warning contains pretty things, all heat embossed. I've just pulled a little flower out there from my stash and um, just cut that onto the back there to make the tag. So I've already gone ahead and done half of everything because you need two of each thing. That's my ribbon for later. That's the handle. They're the brads, you pick them up from the pound shop and um, they're always like rebranded so that I think they were in the winter like paper section and then they before that they were on the celebration let's celebrate or something um, and uh, yeah I always grab them when I go in there so and then I just cut the actual split pin off the back so they're just these nice decorative pieces so that's those okay so that is we're going to do two of these so I've already got the card stock to go through with you but that's what we're going to make and that gives you that kind of effect to be able to use the drawstring there's one of the sides you can see already there how that's all come together and that's the double side see what I mean it's not necessarily what I would have gone for really I think that would have been better to have had on the other side and uh, yeah but anyway that's just uh, my, <laughs> my issues okay so you want and that's all that there which I'll talk you through in a minute so for the main bag itself you want two pieces of nine by nine if it's directional, make sure it's the right way up and you're going to score at three and eight and a half and then rotate it and score at three. Rotate it back again and just put a little marker at five and three quarters. You can do that when I was doing the other measurements but I forgot. So five and three quarters, just a little marker there. Do that on again another piece. 
And then you also want two pieces of eight and a half by four. Along the four inch side, you want to score at one and a half and half. And then rotate it so that that one and a half score line, so I've just scored the one and a half there, that one's, you want that one to be at the top. And then you're going to score at three and five and three quarters. And then you also want to score at one and a quarter and one and three quarters, just down to the first score line. So you'll see I've already scored mine. So one and a quarter and one and three quarters, just down to there. Then four and one eighth and four and five eighths, again down to the first score line. And then six and seven eighths and seven and three eighths, again down to the first score line. Now these two will be slightly smaller than that one, but don't worry, this one's going on the side and these are on the front, okay? So it, you really don't notice it. Um, it was because of the, the, the way that I'd done the sizings with this, but you'll see there it all works really well. So it's meant to be that way. Then you will also need two pieces for your handle. These are one and a half by seven and a half. And along the one and a half inch side, you want to score at three quarters of an inch. So right down through the middle, fold and burnish. And then also, while well, you've got your bone folder there, just curl it just to kind of get it into shape because you're basically going to slot one piece underneath like that. And then that will give us a nice reinforced and longer strap because 12 inches isn't quite I, well, it's not high enough. You need a bit more height for it to kind of sit over that drawstring piece. So yeah, that's everything that you need. Um, do we need to do any more? Um, no, that's everything. <laughs> okay, so next we do want to do a bit more scoring, but not with the scoreboard. So we want to create this triangle here in that main section. If I fold all these pieces in. That's that front here. Okay, so you'll see there, that's what we're working on. That's the little half inch tab there. So within that section, so you want to make sure if you fold and burnish the score lines that you've done so far, okay, and you will want the three inch base here and that half inch tab on this right hand side. So you'll have your side there, half inch tab, that's the orientation you want it. And you should have your little marker, your little notch that you would have put there. It's from that that you're then going to, I'm going to do this in a pencil just so you can see it, but you're going to, from that middle point, you're going to score down to where they cross over here, so like so, and then again this one you're going to score down to where they cross over, so it's all within, again if I just fold all this in and that tab. It's all within that section. Can you see the triangle? So there's the pencil down here in the left hand corner, all the way up to that middle, and then again down, and it's to that corner. Don't go over into this section, it's all within that piece. So when you open it up, that's what you'll have. But you're going to score that. You can do a pencil if you want first. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to rub it out first because sometimes if you do the pencil mark and then score, you embed the pencil and it's a bit harder to rub out. So I'm going to just rub that out now so I can see where I'm going on this because I it is a busy paper but I've got to use it it's so good it's so pretty so I've just rub that out and then you just want to go over and score so just make sure you've got a soft, um, soft surface I'm using my mat here and just score with a metal ruler a few times just so you get a nice score line there like so Okay, before I burnish it, I'm now going to do a little bit of cutting. So you, you've got your half inch tab here, you just want to cut up there, just the first score line. And then, so you're just freeing up that base so we can fold it. And then again, just cut up to that one and just remove that completely. And then you can just take a little wedge off there, a little wedge off there, leave the big rectangle, but take some nice big wedges off of these um, end little pieces because these are the sides and it just means that when you fold it all in nothing overhangs so that's going to go in like that and then these here you can now fold so they're both the mounting folds and it should fold right up to that crossover section there and again 
All right, again, right down to that corner, so you've got a really nice triangle there, okay? So you want to do that twice, just check all that's all okay. Um, so you've got your other piece like that, so you'll see mine both look exactly the same. So that's that done, just clear this away. Next, we need to create this. So we've already done all the scoring, just pop that there. So you'll have something like this. So this bottom half inch score line is this piece here and that's what we're going to use to stick inside this. So it gives us that nice two tone. We've got those two, two kind of prints there. It looks really nice. Um, so you just need to do a little bit of cutting. So what we, first of all again, if you just fold and burnish. I'm glad I've got another sheet of this because there's a beautiful pattern on the back there which I want to use. For another project okay so turn it up so you've got the half inch at the top and you're going to cut up every one of these okay to the to that first score line so just go along and just cut all of those all right so they're just all free probably should have done this bit first and then do the cutting but it, it really doesn't matter next you want to draw with a pencil because you're going to these are actually now going to become cut lines and you're going to join from where we just cut down there so the bottom of that score line to the corner and again this one so if I show you oh, if I fold and burnish there as well which makes it a bit easier for you to see everything so I've just pencil started the pencil mark from the bottom of this piece on that score line down to the corner it's above this tab don't go down to this bottom here you want to go to again where they cross over okay so you want to do that on all of them and it just makes it easier for you when you go to cut this you can rub out anything but you'll probably end up cutting most of the pencil away anyway Okay. Also, you may not want to do that. You may be happy to just use your scissors and cut straight in, you know, freehand. So just whatever works best for you. But now when you cut it away, that bit just falls off. But otherwise, just cut up there. But again, I'm just going to cut it all away. Because it doesn't matter if it's slightly, you know, smaller than that. As long as all the points and the joins all meet up like so. I'm just going to cut the rest of this. Okay, so now you'll have something like that. It looks like the rooftops and the chimneys and then you just want to just carefully hold the kind of bit where it's scored there because you would you know you don't want it coming like shooting off and just curl them all like so just makes it easier for when we add our glue I've just got a couple of pegs just because it's I find it a bit useful when we go to stick this down and then if I can find my glue you just want to add a little bit of glue above the score line so there's your score line just in that section, just there. I'm just going to do all these at the same time, like so. And then try not to squash the curve, but just kind of bring it back so it lines up with that score line. You don't want to go past the score line. And then just pop a little peg in place, like so. And then just go along to the next one. But you see I've still kept the curve there, so just try not to squeeze that flat because you want to be able to thread the ribbon through and it just it looks nice when you've got that curl or curve curl curve um, and again just going to pop that one like so all right you can see there I've just got those nice little loops that was the word I was looking for right next while that one's drying I'm going to grab this one here and you just want to with it facing the right way up you want to add some glue all along that tab and then lay it down with that tab on the right hand side here of this piece all of these score lines should line up sorry this score line and the top of the triangle will line up with that one there so i'm just going to lay that down you want to sit it so it sits perfectly with the top of that score line and it should end nicely there but i can see the score line there i can fold it it joins perfectly there and the top of the triangle meets there as well and then that just goes to the edge if you flip it over see what i mean with the well they are two different papers but i don't know i can't help thinking they just need to uh just change the um the order really of all the papers because they're all lovely in their own way but they could work so nice together because if you wanted to do like a well, I guess even on the inside, if you imagine this would all be orange, um, would it be that? I think it would look really nice. Anyway, going back to that again, really doesn't matter too much. Then with the next one, 
whilst the pegs are still on there it's okay I'm gonna just stick that exactly the same way and just fold it to make sure it's all sitting where it needs to be and then we need to stick them together so any of the tabs any piece it doesn't matter I'm just going to run some glue just along that one and again start with the base score line so this one here and line it up with the bottom of that tab that way you know everything will match up like so so it will end up looking like one big piece okay like so and then if you flip it over fold two sides over so you've got that other tab and again and then fold that one over and just spend a minute just to make sure that's all secure okay and again if you don't want to secure the base then you can just pop it all together like so and just feed the ribbon through it's as simple as that so if you do like to make things but maybe store them flat um, you know you might not need them straight away you might just want to make them for your own stash so you've got gift boxes and bags ready to go but I'm going to put this one together so decide whether you've got a preference to the front or the back mine really doesn't make any difference so I'm going to this is going to be the front so the back one goes down first and then I'm going to just pop some glue on this one Hold in these, just kind of tack in place for the minute, pop a bit of glue on top of that one, pop a bit more over them, and put the front one down, it will cover everything, turn it upside down, and I'm just going to grab, oh it's there, my ruler, and you can just go in and just spread all that glue out and get right into the corners and make sure it's all stuck down. Okay, I'm just going to take these pegs off because that's all done and then I'm going to grab my ribbon now I've already gone ahead and put one of the little metal faux metal decorative pieces there and that's just using mirrored cardstock so I've got a piece here that is one inch by half an inch so it's slightly bigger than the ribbon itself because I'm going to trim it but now I can feed that through all of these loops just I didn't think about that actually oh is it going to work I might have to Oh no, it's fine. I should be able to go through all of them. Hopefully they're not all stuck like that. Oh no, they're okay. So I'm just going to feed it through. So you want to start on one side on the front so that you, you'll come back out on that one on the front. Um, so it looks nice and even. That's again, if you want to do it that way, you might have another idea. Okay, and then just pull it all together like you would any drawstring. And look. It's so cool, I really like it. And then I'm gonna make a bow and then I can cut off what I need because I wanna make sure, I don't know why I done that on one end, I think it was just another thing I thought oh, I'll do it and then the video won't be so long, but um, I don't wanna to have to trim the end, so let's see how I go with this ribbon. Yeah, it's way too long, so let's go a little bit shorter that end. So let's pull this round a bit more. Okay, that's better and then I'm just going to trim this one so it's same length and then with this piece here just want to curl it a little bit like I said I've made it wider deliberately because then you can cut it down to shape but now just fold it in half like so and then I've just got my glue gun on here and I'm just going to cover that amount you know of uh, ribbon however you know long that Piece, that metal piece is, yours might be, I keep saying metal piece but you know what I mean, just put some on both sides and then you just want to pop it in there so it covers it all, squeeze all that hot glue, like I said it's warm to touch but it, it shouldn't burn you, just give it a few minutes like so but you see that it's overhanging on both pieces, if you just turn it up away from you, you can cut up along it you just get a really nice, looks, you know, quite real, like so. And then it looks like that. And it's really strong as well. So that's that done. So you can keep it just like that if you want a box. That's, you know, no problem at all. But I do want to add my handles. 
Okay, so you would have curled them both, but you do want to add some glue onto one of them first. You want to stick this together completely because the other one you will then stick over just the end of it. So, in fact, no, what you can do, let's do this one a bit different. So, I'm going to still cover it all with glue inside this one. And then I'm going to open up this one here. And you want to sit them about, you want to go stick it over it about an inch in. So I'm just using my grid here. I'm going to stick it over it like that. Okay, so I've gone in, like I said, about an inch. I'm going to fold that up a bit, like so. But before you stick that down, because that's going to stick as well, just put some glue inside this one. This gives you a nice reinforced handle, because you've obviously doubled it up. You don't have to. If you know you're putting in, you might just be putting in like a little light scarf or something. Then you know you can do the handle however you want. You might want to use ribbon. It's entirely up to you. So now I can just keep it curved as that glue sets. So let it fall back into that shape. I'm going to grab my peg again and just hold that in place there, just so I can work on that curve. But now, once we stick it down on the sides, I'm going to use my hot glue. So you've got your handle there. And then again, with my hot glue, I'm just going to cover about, I don't know, half an inch. Pop this on its side and just stick it in the middle of that section, or that side. And then again, on the other side, I'm just going to pop my hot glue. really nice and it is it's very strong and then I've just got those decorative pieces there so I'm just going to pops again pops pop again some hot glue I'm losing all my words today and then that one will stick just there and then just flip that over and pop that one in there and then I just need to get my tag and I've already put my string on this and all I've done is I just thread the string through one of the little loops and then kind of knot it off. It's not going to stay there now is it? It's going to fall off. Let me go, what one did I do on this one here? Let's have a quick look. So it was on the front one actually, so let's go in here. There we go. And I want it just hanging off of the front, so about there. It is hanging off the side there. It looks really cute. I love it. So there are my drawstring gift bags. I think they are super cute. Really like them. Really unusual. Definitely something that's, you know, going to make people kind of go, ooh, that looks really special. I think they're great. And I, I keep looking at it. I think now we've realised what, what it reminds me of. And it's a gin bottle. There's that certain brand and I can't think of what it is off the top of my head. But it's got that kind of look to it. That's what it's reminding me of. So there, maybe you could even put a nice bottle of gin in the side. Hope you like them. Hope you give them a go. Can't wait to see your styles as always. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing so you get to see more. And I'll be back again soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.